Well, I heard it the way that most people did, which was in the newspapers. As a story reported in a way that it was, guess what, isn't this, is it the Serbian Pink Panthers, what's happened here, was the initial reaction to that story. Speculation about hard and decent European criminals, you know, young and vigorous and fit people. And then quite soon after that, it became obvious that the fact the perpetrators were geriatric London villains. There was a lot of interest, I think, because uh, these old boys had uh, done such an extraordinary thing and bought a, a, a hole through a wall, and uh, it, it excited people's curiosity and interest. When I saw the robbery, you know, who did it, I said to my wife, just wait for the script, they're going to ask me. Well, it started with Michael, Michael Kane, who was waiting for the call, I think, from all of us. Uh, he got it from us, I think, first, and he was persuaded by our version of the story. And once Michael was in place, we were able to build a, a wonderful ensemble around him of great actors, all of which I revere. And so for that was quite daunting in a way to be on set on day one on a scene we did first up that was all of a minute. And I was kind of a bit worried about this, thinking, well, maybe they eat me alive. But they were very kind to me. Look, I got a call from James Marsh saying, I'm making this movie, there's a part for you. Uh, are you interested? And uh, would you like to read the script? And I was like, James. I don't need to read the script. I'll, I'll, if, it, if I've got one line, if I've got no lines, I'm there. Um, I, you know, these guys are my heroes, and, and I, I still can't believe I was allowed to, to in a room with them. We had Winnie Bagos on, or dressing rooms and all that, but no one kind of went back to them. We all sat down on the set, having a cup of coffee and a biscuit, because old boys like biscuits, custard creams, and we'd have a rabbit, you know, and we'd tell stories. They, they just tell great stories, and. It was a pleasure turning up every day because you knew you was going to hear another story, you know? Well, the thing is, I was working with old friends, people I've worked with before. Ray Winston was my son in Last Orders, you know, and, and Tom Courtney was one of my best friends in, in Last So it, it, it was very easy. The first thing about the other, all other six of them, is that they were all fabulous actors, which is, which is uh, to work with skilled people is such a, such a blessing. This lot needed help. You know, they're very limited performers and I have a wide, you know, wide range and a huge portfolio. So I thought I'd just, I'd go down and just help them, give them a little tip here and there with the acting and generally, yeah. So, yeah, but it was a joy to do. What I liked a bit more than anything else was that I actually liked the idea of old people refusing to accept that this is the lot. They had to shuffle off to the grave now. But these guys didn't do that. Well, they, and you're not condoning what they did, but there's something in the spirit of that, and the defiance of old age, that's a kind of lesson to us all. I'm not suggesting we'll go out and rob stuff when we get our pensions, but there's something about the idea of just trying to transcend the given circumstances of old age, which I really kind of spark to.